Alright, so nagbabalik tayo sa ating violin tips and tricks. And for today's video, let's talk about bowing and why following the proper uh, bowings can help make your playing better. No? How the down bow and up bow stroke differ and what you can do to maximize the use of each stroke and properly include it in your playing. Okay? So, this video mainly is for everyone, no? hindi lang basta pang solo. No? Bakit ba importante din in a group that you also follow the bowings of uh, your section leaders, for example, in an orchestra. Okay? So, basically, yung bow strokes. No? We have two basic bow, bow strokes, which is down and up bow. And then, we're not gonna talk about articulation because that's a whole different thing. But let's talk about yung down and up strokes. Bakit ba importante na sinusunod natin kung ano dapat? Minsan, di ba? We see pieces that uh, tell us to do double down bows. Sometimes they want us to do double up bows. No? Yung inuulit natin, nagre-retake tayo or nagre-retract when it comes to bowing. Why is that so important? So, okay? So, it's not just about the theatrics or yung aesthetic ba? No? Of course, in an orchestra setting, we want to be able to play uniform yung buong section. Sometimes not just yeah, just your section. For example, not just the first violins, but the whole string section should follow the same bowing just so it looks uniform plus it also affects the sound that you make. Okay? So, first, let's think about how the bow works so that we could understand bakit napaka-importante niya. But some people take it for granted, especially for, for some beginners na parang, oh, pwede na yun, kahit anong bowing, okay lang. No? So first, the down bow is naturally the stronger starting sound no? when, we, when it comes to the strokes. No? So when you do a down bow stroke, you have essentially all the power right on top of the strings. Agad. Andun na siya. All you have to do is pull. Now, if I don't try to balance out the volume, your bow will naturally, I mean, the sound that the bow produces will naturally grow smaller or softer. So, if you do that, for example, start here and then just pull. Without adding any other effort, the bow itself will go to that direction, will be softer at the end. Just because, again, we have all the power, all the pressure, all the force that we need right here. Now, when we do an up bow naman, it's the exact opposite. Okay? So, what do we mean? So, when we do an up bow, if I don't put any pressure or force when I do an up bow, this is how it's going to sound. Okay, so naturally the volume increases as we reach the lower part. So with that in mind, you could actually parang decipher mo na ano ba yung strengths and weaknesses of each stroke. No, for a down bow, why is a down bow more effective? Let's say when we're playing chords. No, why is an up bow more effective when we want to do uh, a crescendo for some? Uh, techniques na kailangan ng mas subtle yung movements or when an up beat comes, bakit kailangan up bow. So those types of things uh, play into how to use your bow or what type of stroke you need. No? Kaya nga nilalagay siya sa music natin. No? For example, when we talk about an up beat, usually nilalagay nila na yung up beat ay up bow because we want the down beat to be stronger. More emphasis on the down beats. That's why you, you do. Diba? That's why you try to make the up bow a little bit more going to the direction of the down bow. So, ganun. Diba? And then also, when it comes to slurs, bakit ba tayo nagsislur? So, I like to think of slurs as a way of speaking, di ba? Yung pagiging articulate natin. Now, 
we we try to slur notes let's say three is to one or by twos and we we hear that difference so for example if i'm going to do a scale of a three is to one right so nag-iiba yung ating mga points of highs and lows no we could change what the music means just by changing the voice so if we do twos or if we do fours nag-iiba yung meaning no that's why bowing is really important to follow it's not just put there kasi suggested lang of course there would be times that you can change and work around with bowings with different phrasing because again you can actually phrase with the bow no but it's not really uh, a good practice but it could help you build the phrasing that you want diba? so what do we mean by phrasing the way the melody works diba? Kung paano siya nahahate, how how do you breathe with the uh, music that you have we can adjust that with the bow all you have to do is find out which part of the stroke you want to use, which part of the bow is needed. And of course, bowing is also planning the same way we plan our fingers, diba? Sometimes we shift to a certain position to reach a, a better uh, position to play other notes na susunod dun sa phrase natin. So the same thing with the bowing. Sometimes you have to set yourself up. For example, if you want to play at the lower part, of course, you can play a lot of long down bow strokes. Kasi kung gusto mo bumalik dito, how can you get back there? That's how you also plan your bow. We have techniques called staggered bowing. No? Kapag kailangan natin, especially in an orchestra, when you play a lot of uh, long tones, you want to be able to switch with a, another player. No? You're playing the same notes, but you don't want people to hear you. the changes. You can also use that. So, bowing is essentially the air that you breathe if you're a singer. No? For, for a string player like us. Because with proper bowing, you get good, better articulation, better sound quality, and of course, more control when it comes to dynamics, when it comes to interpretation. Even in tempo, no. Sometimes we we want to play. Let's say you want to play a spiccato piece or a spiccato uh, passage. Pero you can't do a spiccato here, kasi masadong may hirapan. So what do you end up doing is you have to make sure before you get to that passage that you get to the cert to a certain point wherein you can do the spiccato. So you have to also plan the bowings. Hindi lang siya basta o oh, sinulat lang natin. O oh, apa ko dito because I want to. You should always have a reason for writing down annotations in your music, no? So, same thing with an orchestra, di ba? We want to be able to... It's, it's, it has this dramatic effect, of course, no? It's a visual thing, but it's more than that. It controls the way you present the music, how it sounds, how well it will translate, no? How well you can really project. Depending on just the position where you're playing it, no, where it leads you to be. No, kumare, dinadala mo siya dito, you want to be able to do a swift up bow when you reach this part, no? for example. There's a lot of planning involved and there's a lot of experimentation that you can do. No? So, for beginners, I would really highly suggest to just follow bowings that are written in your pieces. No? So, follow them and try to understand bakit kailangan ako mag-retake? Why do I need to do another down bow? Or why do I need to slur these notes? And when you find out the reason behind that, the, the musical meaning behind it, it's gonna be easier for you to actually create your own bowings for other pieces as well. No? So, when you get to a, a higher level, you, you're you're used to following bowings, you understand the bowing that is written, is written there because it has meaning. Diba? So, 
pag nakakita kayo ng mga slurs, never disregard anything that is already written. No? Especially if it's printed on the books that you are using. No? Of course, if it's not, but if your teacher suggests you do it, then try it out. No? Kasi kung kakaligtaan lang natin yung bowing, you're missing out a lot on the quality of sounds that you can actually produce. Kasi marami ka pang produce if you follow bowings, no? So, in the most simple pieces, like for example, in box minuet, di ba? Just that phrase, if you don't follow the bowing, it would have a different meaning. Like, di ba? Iba na yung magiging tunog niya, iba yung quality. Iba rin yung emotion that it conveys. So, following bowings are important for you to be able to be more comfortable in your play. Sana nakatulong tong video na to. If it did, please do drop a like. Comment down below more content you'd like to see. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on all my socials. All links you need down in the description box below. This has been Ryan Manakil for Violin Tips and Tricks. And I'll see you on the next video.